Welcome back, Mighty Vandals, to Tubs of the Club, your University of Idaho affiliate on the Big Sky Podcast Network. I'm host, backup host, Brian Marceau. Dallas Hammer is God knows where, so it's the uh, Marceau and Martin show meeting. I'm joined by producer, seducer, Martin Ham- ha- Martin Heemstra. Really wanted to call you Martin Hammer, though, because, well, it's because of all the producing and seducing you're doing. I just blended the two of you together. Um, I'm not, I don't need to go into details on the type of seduction I'm imagining, but we're done talking about that. Martin, you're in Moscow. How's it going, dude? It's going great. It's a little sad after the game, but it's not like past losses where you're just pissed off at the coaching staff. You know, well, we're just going to jump into it, dudes. <clears throat> we're around the bar brought to us by Hughes River Expedition. So Idaho travels to Sacramento State play the number two Sacramento State Hornets. Uh, Stingers were up for the Hornets. Uh, Sacramento State holds on for a 31-28 win, uh, which this game was pretty wild as far as the back and forth, the rhythm of the game itself. So I Sacramento State strikes first uh, with Jake Dunaway throwing a 31-yard touchdown pass uh, to, to wide receiver Miller. Uh, don't have his name in front of me, so already amateur hour, guys. You're welcome. Uh, but anyway, Sacramento State, their limited success through the air came in the first first quarter touchdown pass, 31 yards from Jake Dunaway. Idaho misses, uh, Ricardo Chavez misses a 40, 40 yard field goal later in the first quarter. Next score is, uh, is Sacramento State. It's a 26-yard field goal. Idaho bounces back with their only with uh, their only score of the first half, a 16-yard touchdown run by Elisha Cummings. Although uh, again, Sacramento State look really. Martin and I are going to get into this in the first half, first three quarters. Sacramento State kind of dominated this game. By the end, by the midpoint of the third quarter, 7:40 left. Asher O'Hara, the running quarterback for Sacramento throws a real nice eight yard touchdown pass to Pierre Williams that puts Sacramento state up 24 to seven and th- through almost all the third quarter Sacramento state really looked like they were threatening to run away at this game. But with two minutes, 54 seconds left, Giovanni McCoy throws an 11 yard touchdown pass to Hayden Hatton, who had an absolute game and some huge plays. And th- that's where the Idaho comeback began. Idaho after the touchdown pass to Hayden Hatton, there's two more touchdown passes to Hayden Hatton, both in the fourth quarter, one with eight minutes, 26 seconds left, a four-yard pass to Hatton from Giovanni McCoy. The second, a 22-yard pass with six minutes, 26 seconds left. That, that uh, sec- second touchdown of the fourth quarter puts Idaho up 28-24. to But then Sacramento State puts together a near five-minute drive running the ball, punching punches a uh, Asher O'Hara punches in a two-yard touchdown with a minute 48 left. Idaho did make some progress uh, in their uh, you know two-minute drill, less than two-minute drill, but ended up uh, falling short. Giovanni McCoy is he's not sacked, but he, he was getting sacked and fumbled on the final play for Idaho. Final score is 31-28, a very competitive game. So, Martin, throw it to you as always to start with. What went well for Idaho today? I think just to, I, for me, I'm, oh God, um, I'm going to say like making adjustments in the second half, just to be able to, just to come back and be within three minutes of when winning the game to me, because I'm not going to lie. I don't know if coach staff listens to this stuff, but like, I kind of felt like Sacramento state was just going to roll this game and win like 34, 17, 34, 10. It wasn't going to be anywhere close, but to, keep it competitive through to come back, make it competitive to me is kind of the make it competitive when it felt like it wasn't. Yeah. Th- what you're saying, Martin is the lived experience of watching this game. Sacramento state dominated this game for virtually three entire quarters, but Hey, their Idaho was last possession of the game. Idaho's down by three, but Idaho, Idaho was driving with the chance to win the game in the fourth quarter, in spite of being dominated for three quarters. And, Prior to that, Idaho had pulled ahead in spite, again, of being dominated for three quarters of the game. The thing that went well for me is, well, look, one, we had timely turnovers. Uh, Paul Moala, huge pick. But before Paul Moala's interception, Marcus Harris picked off Jake Dunaway the play before. I mean, I was uh, in our hashtag only tubs group text. I was actually mid hunting and pecking after the first Marcus, after the Marcus Harris interception. There's no way Troy Taylor is going to give Jake Dunaway a chance to lose this game. 
And then first play for Sacramento State once they have the ball back after Idaho had scored. Well, Jake Dunaway throws a pick, this one from Paul Moala. But those were two huge those two those defensive plays were huge in terms of uh what what happened to turn the tide for idaho on the defensive side of the ball and really the story of this game which we'll, we'll spend more time on for idaho was for a lot of this game defense wasn't where you'd say relative strength was uh, martin i do want to talk before we shift over to some some other things that we need to talk about um, some specific things that went well for idaho uh, the vandals were effective running the ball 34 rushes for 144 yards, the actual number's higher because Giovanni McCoy was sacked uh, a good number of times. We will fact check that number in a second. But Elisha Cummings led the way, 10 rushes for 62 yards and a touchdown. Anthony Woods, 12 rushes for 62 yards. Uh, Andre Carter got a little more run as well after uh, that rumbling almost touchdown against Portland State, two rushes for 22 yards. Uh, Rashawn Johnson, three rushes for 14 yards. But Idaho was still able to run the football against Sacramento State, and Sacramento State's rush defense is their relative defensive strength. So that's another thing that even against a number two team, one of the very best teams in the FCS and a team that's strong defensively, Idaho was still able, able to move the ball on the ground, which has been a focal point of Jason X offenses. Martin, anything else that you want to talk about that went well for Idaho? Nothing I, nothing really I can think of without jumping ahead to other future okay. segments. We'll sh shift back because, hey, guys, we just talked about a couple of things, and obviously more than a couple of things went well for Idaho. So we'll circle back to hit a couple of those things. But, Martin, obviously Idaho lost the game. So a couple of things at least had to not go well. So in your mind, uh, what did not go so well today? I'm going to take the obvious one here and say the rushing defense was just absolutely atrocious to give up. The 300 yards rushing is abs is something that we shouldn't have happen. And if it wasn't 300 yards rushing, I'm gonna safe to assume Idaho might might have won this one. Yeah, I'm gonna have to piggyback on this one on that for the most part, which is look, Sacramento State is a very good rushing football team, the best rushing football team in the Big Sky, one of the best rushing teams in the nation, and like you saw why today. On the ground, running back Cameron Scadaboo rushed 17 times for 134 yards. That's an average of 7.9. But the the other rusher who, to me, was, you know, if we're giving Sacramento State a game ball, I'd be giving it to Asher O'Hara, <clears throat> the running quarterback for Sacramento State. Yeah, he goes 2-2 passing for 11 yards and a touchdown, one very nice touchdown pass, of course. But O'Hara on the ground cut up Idaho for almost this entire game, 26 rushes for 129 yards. So between those two, uh, you're flirting. You're, you're flirting with the 300 number. And Martin, Sacramento State as a team rushed for 299, but there were sacks as well. So there you go. You asked about did they hit 300? Yes, uh, they they hit 300, which relative to an average Sacramento State uh, conference game, Sacramento State rushes for 284.6 yards per game. My bad. That's the number two rushing team in the conference. Montana State's number one. So this was just a little bit above average on the ground. Uh, other thing I want to talk about that did not go so well, Martin, the offensive line, the pass protection specifically for um, for Giovanni McCoy, it, ju it just wasn't enough to take down a team like Sacramento State. A, uh, you know, Sacramento State is competing for a bye. They have to beat Weber State next week, but the Hornets are going to, not only are they competing for a bye, Look, they're, they're number two team in the nation. They're tied for first place in the big sky at, you know, they're, they're undefeated in conference play. They're five, no conference play. This was a game where if Idaho wins, Idaho kind of has, you know, the leg up in at least a share of the conference title. So if you're going to beat a team like Sacramento state, you're going to have to be hitting a, a lot of different facets of the game. Offensive line for a lot of this game was not on pass play specifically was not able to buy Giovanni McCoy, the type of time he needs, but simultaneously, this was don't mean as a put down for the guy, but this was definitely Giovanni McCoy in my mind, his least effective game as a, at least least effective FCS game as quarterback. He's 18 of 33, which those numbers are not terrible. Uh, and he was much better in the fourth quarter than he was in quarters one through three he goes 18 to 33 for 207 yards, throws three touchdowns. So no, no picks uh, did have a fumble on the last play, but whatever it, Idaho is going to lose the ball anyway. Uh, the reason I bring up McCoy there too is McCoy. 
he just missed some passes that we've grown accustomed to seeing McCoy hit this year. And um, it, it was a little, it was a little bit unnerving to me. Also McCoy threw 33 times. That's the most he's thrown as a, as a Vandal starter this year. And uh, just earlier in the game, the accuracy was not there quite as much. And uh, I mean, that's part of why Idaho is down 24 to seven, but defensive plays helped turn around and McCoy did uh, pick up his accuracy specifically in the four, in the end of third quarter and into the fourth quarter. So we'll circle back for other points, but Martin uh, game ball, offense who are you going to i i'm gonna go hayden hatton just for making the clutch plays that he did to give idaho the touchdowns to make the so i think it was him that made the sideline catch that was looked very kind of close to me at first was that one just him making his timely cat plays to me was like what the offense get i'd give him the uh, game ball on offense yeah martin you give him the game ball because you should uh, I don't. I don't think there's anyone even to really talk about as an option B for for game ball. Hayden Hatton, a, sorry, seven catches for 113 yards, three touchdowns, a long of 28. And you, you're absolutely right. The, the big plays Idaho had, and I mean timely, not necessarily like total yardage. The big plays Idaho had in the past game, it was Hayden Hatton. Man, he was. He looked like the first team All Big Sky wide receiver he was in the spring season the number of targets Hatton's gotten has kind of fluctuated throughout the year, but Hatton was definitely the guy who Sacramento state struggled with the most. And Hatton also had some pretty damn impressive catches. Uh, he had one on the sideline where uh, I mean, first off, this was in the third quarter should have been pass interference on Sacramento state, but second Hatton made the catch juggling it as he was spinning away from the defender who was in, who was like I said, pass interfering. So man, yeah, you're right. Offensively, Hayden Hatton game ball, no question. Uh, that was a of we've seen Hayden Hatton look pretty damn good this year. This was if this was not the most impressive Hatton's look to me, it's the second most impressive. Defensive side of the ball, who are you going with? I even with like the rushing defense, even with like what what the defense gave up rushing the ball, I'm gonna give it to. I think I'm gonna go with Paul Mawala just because he always seems to come up with those interceptions when the defense needs them the most and he just gets them gets the offense the ball back and gets them in a good spot to keep going you know what not a lot of uh drama here in our game balls because you, you stole mine we we try to, to talk about different guys but to me that like this was just obvious on both sides of the ball like you're right martin moala was there making some of the biggest plays the whole game. Marcus Harris had a very nice interception. And look, maybe I should go with Martin Harris because, sorry, Marcus Harris. I, man, I'm struggling with names, Martin. Marcus Harris is maybe a guy I should I should go with because Idaho pass defense, man. Idaho did do that pretty well today. Sacramento State, eight of 19 through the air, two touchdowns, two interceptions for a total of 92 yards. So he had 92 yards on 19 passes. Sacramento State couldn't pass on Idaho, and Marcus Harris had a big pick and multiple plays too. Look, if, if you're a if you're a passing offense going against Idaho, you just don't target Mar Marcus Harris because he's one of the best cornerbacks in the league. But Paul Mualla to me was the guy I'm going to go with too. Mualla finishes with I I don't know how he possibly only had five tackles because in the second half it just seemed like every big defensive play Mualla was there. But Mualla with five tackles, three solo. One sack and one pick. Uh, this is, and e look, every game Moala's had picks, Martin. They've been just so damn clutch. He had the huge, the tide turning interception against Northern Colorado. He had the huge interception, the first of the two interceptions against Montana. And then he has a second of two interceptions against Sacramento State. So, yeah, Paul Moala all over the place, guys. Martin, you said you had a couple other things you wanted to get to or that you wanted to bring up at some point. Take the wheel, man. That was just me jumping ahead to game balls. That's all. <laughs> Amateur okay. hour. Amateur hour. Okay. Well, Martin, I want to bring up um, a couple, just hit hit on a couple more things. The first is I want to talk about the character of this Idaho team. Uh, we talk about the coaching staff and adjustments, which we should talk about the coaching staff and adjustments. But look, this game for three quarters, Martin, maybe your lived experience was different than mine. Sacramento State just looked better than Idaho through three quarters. And I mean thoroughly better than Idaho for three quarters. 24 to 7 and 24 to 7 felt insurmountable. And then 
bam, end of the third quarter, the team regroups and it's both all, it's on both sides of the ball. Hayden Hatton three Hayden Hatton has three touchdowns between two minutes left in the third quarter and about six minutes left in the fourth quarter. And then the defense forces two turnovers. Think they should have forced a third on that final drive for Sacramento State. Uh, Moala again strips Asher O'Hara, but the officials ruled that O'Hara's momentum had stopped. I gotta say, by the replay, it did not look like the momentum had stopped for O'Hara. That looked like a legitimate strip. But look, even even with that taking place, there was a lot of small plays that could have gone one way or another to change this game. Michael Graves drops a pass on third down in Idaho's final drive. That would have been a first down and would have reset everything. Graves drops the pass, then Giovanni McCoy, you know, last last play of the game for Idaho. McCoy gets sacked, fumbles out. I don't know what the official ruling was. It doesn't matter because where he went down is where Sacramento State took over and the game was was over. But look, we had the Graves catch. We had the Ash O'Hara should have been fumble. There's other plays in the first half. Like McCoy was just off with his accuracy in the first half in a way we haven't seen before. Even with all those things taking place, Idaho did not tuck tail. In heading into the end of the third quarter, the team regrouped and not only did they make a comeback, they took the lead and looked like Idaho might be turning this game around. So just the character of this team, even in a loss guys, this was still a kick-ass fun game. This does not change my outlook on the next three games Idaho has to close out the season. So I guess maybe I'll ask you that Martin, this, as a result of this game, does that, does this change your outlook on who Idaho is as a team? No, it I it doesn't. I've st- I've seen enough that if they if they were to lose out, I would be disappointed. But at the same time, they've shown they've made a lot more changes from last year's team to this year's team. Yeah, and the the biggest one to me, like we we know, new coaching staffs have their own identity they want to install on the team, both schematically and let's say the personality of the team itself. This team doesn't give up. This team is not, uh, this is not at all anything like, you know, the team lost 5,000 to three to Eastern Washington last year. This is a team that it's going to take a few punches and it doesn't matter that they're still going to give a few punches back. We know the second half adjustments are going to be there. Um, To me, Idaho, even in losing this game, Martin, Idaho established that this is a playoff quality team. Even with an awful first three quarters, Idaho pushed number two Sacramento state to the wall at Sacramento during Sacramento state's homecoming, where if you saw the, when the camera was able to pan the Sacramento state side of the, of the stadium, Sacramento state had pretty damn good attendance for that game. Their section was, was pretty much completely covered and Idaho went there, acquitted themselves very well. This definitely tells me this is not only a playoff team, Martin, this is a team that can advance in the playoffs. Now, Sacramento State is a unique, is a to me a uniquely tough matchup for Idaho because Sacramento State showed they're for real on the ground. Idaho was the best rushing defense, uh, both sorry, was the best rushing defense in terms of yards allowed per game in the Big Sky. That's not going to be the case when we look at the new stats for this week because I got got to hit the actual totals for Sacramento State, Martin, about what what they accrued. Uh, set, yeah, sorry. We said they got 299 yards on the ground. If you adjust for sacks, they were at 305 yards for the game. Uh, but my lived experience of this was this was not just Sacramento State having some big rushes that gave them the total. No, Sacramento State was churning out, you know, five yard plays, then seven, five yards, seven yard, 12 yard. Like they had, you know, a couple, one or two yards in there as well. But Sacramento State was marching on the ground. And it was in a way that Idaho just has, hasn't played a team, at least in the FCS, that's been able to do that on the ground. This, is, this was not close to Idaho against Montana. Uh, Sacramento State was just able to run because they have good – their running backs are, and their running quarterback, Astro O'Hara, is very good. And look, just the O-line, defense, O-line defensive line match, matchup of this game, Sacramento State on the ground clearly won that matchup. Keep going, Brian. <laughs> okay, Martin. Um, so the other, you know, another takeaway I want to want to go over for this game. Um, pass defense was good. Now, Jake Dunaway absolutely missed 
uh, sometimes. Uh, by the way, Jake Dunaway should have had a third pick. Mervin Kenyon was in great position. And I think it was the first quarter to pick off a pass uh, that he just dropped on the game, allowing 92 yards through the air defensively. Pr- uh, pretty damn good effort in secondary. So I guess what I'd say, and Martin, I want uh, feel free to jump in if you want to. Like if if the lens you're reading of this game is what did Idaho prove even in a loss? Um, I think we proved that the secondary improvement that we've seen throughout this season, we already knew it was for real, but it's reasonable to wonder after we've seen how bad Montana has looked recently um, against teams who are not Idaho trying to move the ball. Uh, we all, we know Portland state sucks when they're not playing Eastern Washington. We know, we know Northern Colorado sucks. So let's like remove that. We can remove those games against a typically good passing offense. Idaho definitely took the, uh, took moving through the air away from Sac state's arsenal. Uh, but the other thing this proved to me is, I don't think Idaho's rush defense was as good as our stats would have told you heading into this game. Part of that was because in big sky play, Idaho had been matched up against the bottom four rush teams in the league. Sacramento state is, is a different monster. And uh, for even when Idaho was playing better, there was no point in this game, Martin, where Idaho was able to, to slow down Sacramento state on the ground. What what happened was through the air. Uh, Idaho was able to force a couple turnovers could have been three. So what to, to, I guess, yeah, I'll, I'll throw the question to you in your mind. What did Idaho prove to you about who they are as a team tonight? To me, they show that they can hang with the big boys, hang with the perennial powers in the, in, in the league, it bring with the top team in the league. And as Colin Hughes ever so put greatly put in our hashtag only tubs, year ago, Idaho lost to Eastern by 50, and today we lost to the number two ranked team in the country by three. This staff and these players are legit. Fuck, I wish we won that. Yeah, look, that's completely where we're at right now, which you know, I'm going to hit the comment section for just a second. Uh, Captain 58 says, Dunaway wasn't very good tonight. Lucky for Sack, O'Hare was great. Yeah, that's spot on, Captain. Uh, I, I, I honestly can't believe Troy Taylor put the ball back in Dunaway's hand after that first pick, because that should have been a second pick, which is, that's why I just have to bring this up. Idaho really struggled with Sacramento state for three quarters. And it's clear that if Idaho and Sacramento state played 10 times, Idaho probably wins at least four of those Uh, Sacramento state. They, they proved they're a very good football team too. They've now done this two weeks in a row. In fact, this game was almost mirrored Sacramento State against Montana last week where Montana dominated for three quarters and then Sacramento State came back at the end. This was Sacramento State dominates for three quarters and nearly loses. But it's it's honestly to me, Martin Wild, to be sitting here after a loss. I'm upset that we lost, but like I'm not I left this I left this game feeling better about Idaho. Of look, Idaho still is in play for a conference championship. Here's what Idaho needs to have, root for to have happen. Idaho needs Sacramento State to lose this coming week to either Weber State or final week of the season to UC Davis. Idaho needs to take care of their own business with back-to-back home games against Eastern Washington this week, then UC Davis the week after, then closing out at Pocatello. Idaho then needs to root for Montana to figure out how to move the goddamn ball at some point by the time Montana, Montana state play final game of the season. If Sacramento state picks up a loss and if Montana state picks up a loss, Idaho's route to share the championship is that we have about three to four teams in the big sky finishing with one loss. So we, is Idaho going to get a uh, outright big sky title? No, probably not. And is Idaho going to get the automatic bid? No, probably not because even a one loss Sac state, against Idaho Sac state would, would get that would get the auto bid, but Idaho still is playing for a seed. Idaho needs to win out for that to happen. Um, Idaho is still, uh, I mean, I think honestly now Idaho has probably announced itself at the FCS level. If Idaho drops, Idaho should not drop whatsoever in the polls, having pushed the number two team to the brink. So yeah, I mean, I'm leaving this game wishing we'd won Martin, but just as excited for the rest of the season as I have been the entire year. What about you? 
I I'm the same way. I feel I feel like how I did after the WSU game where this team is miles better, but it's with way it just it I feel the same way coming out of the WSU game as I did coming out of the WSU game, but also man, this team's for real. And if if this game was in Moscow, I I feel like I'd hope would have won it. I I don't have much to disagree with. I guess the things that I'm looking at, Martin, are what are things where Idaho underperformed relative to what we're used to seeing? And when I say underperform, Martin, I mean, I'm not going to say our offensive line in the pass game underperformed. Yeah. Sacramento State overwhelmed our offensive line in the pass game for most of this game. But, uh, but for, honestly, what seems like the third or fourth week in a row, Idaho did show that in the rush game, our offensive line has been fine. Mm. In you know, look at our look at our numbers: four point two yards per rush, 104, 144 yards on thirty four attempts. Uh, there were a few kind of big chunk plays, but the longest Idaho rush was twenty yards. So it wasn't as though like Idaho picked up sixty yards on one rush, and then was you know getting two to three yards most of the game. Otherwise, like Anthony. Anthony Woods, 62 yards on 12 rushes, long of 17. Elijah Cummings, 62 yards on 10 rushes, a long of 16. Uh, McCoy, and McCoy's numbers are weird to look at because he he had a long of a uh, long rush of 15 yards, but he de- oh, that was the other thing, man. McCoy McCoy gets sacked only twice, but he was on the run for a huge amount of this game. Um, so I guess to hit my actual point that I started with like, Hey, what are some things where it seemed like Idaho underperformed Martin is I think Giovanni McCoy leaves this game feeling like he wasn't as accurate as he typically is. There were some misses McCoy had, whether it was he, he missed a few passes short. He also missed a few passes long that we're used to seeing McCoy just be dead on accuracy wise. And it wasn't just because he was on the run. Yeah. Some, some are because he was on the run, but some, some of the time McCoy had time and he was just missing early in the game today that corrected late in the third quarter, but it corrected back Martin to the version we've mostly seen of McCoy for essentially the entire season. So that's, that's one thing I'm going to point to is I bet Giovanni McCoy would say if he had been on point in a way he expected himself in the first half, this is probably a different game. Uh, Ricardo Chavez, that field goal, hey, it's a three-point game. That's a different special teams matters. Um, Chavez started out the year real hot. He's two of his last five. Uh, since that Montana miss, he's two of his last five on field goals, hasn't missed an extra point. So uh, fingers crossed, Martin, that Chavez gets that early season form back. We've seen him do it, so we know he has it. Uh, it's just a question of, can, of is he going to reestablish that consistency? Because against good teams – Look, field goals matter. Uh, just like it, special teams absolutely matters. Ask Weber State against Montana State last week. Ask Eastern Washington, not against Portland State. Eastern Washington is just terrible against Portland State. But uh, there are some small things that just that you know the coaching staff is going to be able to work on for next week. And I feel pretty damn good about this heading into Eastern. Any last points you want to hit, Martin? I think I'd agree with you, like what you just said. Like the mistakes that were made in this game are all very teachable moments, to, like to where I don't feel like they will they will happen again. And it, yeah, that's what I. That's just what I'll say. Is it just felt like, like you said, like the make everything that was what went wrong are all very teachable moments to where they shouldn't happen again. Yeah, you know, I think if we replayed this game as well. Right now, to me, the jury is in. Giovanni McCoy is a complementary offensive piece in that he is best when the rush is used to set up the pass, and he is best when we run things like play action and we get a little bit more on more one on one. There are fewer reads for him to have to process at once. Early in this game, it felt like the coaching staff. Now, credit to the coaching staff, credit to Giovanni. I felt like his game plan early was he wanted to let Giovanni win the game early or push Idaho ahead early. And Idaho just was not able to do that. Idaho shifted back to it based off what I watched. Martin, you tell me if you experienced it different. When Idaho shift back to having the run set up the pass, that to me is where Idaho had a bit more success. And I, honestly, that's the, that's how I felt for two consecutive weeks. Cause Portland state actually felt kind of that way too, 
where coaching staff looked like early they wanted to lean on Giovanni a little more heavily than they typically do. This was the single game Giovanni had in those pass attempts, 33 this season, which not shocking because Idaho was down and teams typically pass more when they're down. Uh, time of possession finished at 31 minutes, 5 seconds for Idaho, 28 minutes, 55 seconds for Sacramento State. But in the first half, those numbers were flipped. Sac State had the ball for 16 minutes and change, Idaho for 13 minutes and change. Uh, when Idaho was, was able to have a more, assess, more success r- rushing the ball and just giving more repetitions to the rush itself, I felt like that was a little bit more of the sweet spot. But if you look, Martin, this is honestly the first time Maybe the first the first time all season, the pass to rush ratio for Idaho was one to one, 34 passes, 34 rushes. And some of those rushes were sacks. So actually, Idaho threw the ball two more times, uh, 34, than we purposely rushed at 32. That's different. So, Martin, I'm going to give you a second to see if you have any closing points. But first thing, got to let you guys know, this, this show has been brought to you by Hughes River Expedition. If you're looking for a great all-inclusive week-long vacation, don't look past your backyard. Hughes River Expeditions has been vandal-owned and operated since 1976 and ready to take you on vacation of a, life, of a lifetime. Enjoy a multi-day trip down the Middle Fork of the Salmon, the main Salmon River in no return, the Salmon River Canyons or the Selway, and check out per- special trips like the one to see the Persed Meteor Shower. Camp on pristine beaches, run amazing whitewater, hike scenic trails, spot wildlife, soak in beautiful natural hot springs, and fish some of the most remote stretches of river in the country. You just bring your clothes? Let HRE handle the rest. So grab a paddle, catch dinner, and ride the bull all throughout the gem state. Call them now at 800-262-1882 or check them out at HughesRiver.com. Martin, last chance, final points. For me, just the guy, it is a loss in the, in the loss column, but there's still like, there's still some stuff positive to take out. Like this isn't, like of years past where it's a loss, like this team's fucking dog shit. Now it's like, they're still really good. And they showed it today. There's nothing that I would like. I wouldn't, if, if a friend of my friends that ever came up to me that are like, not as in, in the wanting to know about Vandal athletics, I'm going to be like, look, this wasn't a bad loss. I'd hope hang tough with the number two team in the country this week. So yeah, they, they lost. They they were expected to lose by twelve, and they only lost by three. There's still positives to that, and that's that's just my last little, little spiel. Also, buy your tickets to the Eastern Washington game. Absolutely, buy your tickets to the Eastern game. They're buy one. They're buy one get one, aren't they, Martin? I believe so, but it might be a special deal where it's like those general concourse well, six well, seats right, but like i mean like that wasn't yeah. a flash sale the oh buy yeah one get one ticket thing it's it's ongoing so yeah dude you martin has the screen up right now for viewers if you're listening to this on podcast uh, the color coding of the available seats is a little bit more promising for idaho considering there will be tickets sold day of the game still so attendance is looking like it's moving in the right direction but idaho even though Vandals are look Vandals are five and three on the season, five and one against the FCS, four and one in big sky play. There's still three big sky games left. Idaho needs to win two out of three to get to that magic number of seven for just making the playoffs. But I believe there is a reasonable prayer that an eight win Idaho team could be looking at a seed. So Idaho's got to win out because the reason I'm going to say this, spend like two seconds, Martin, going over the lot, the, um, playoff resume, and then we'll call it a night because uh, Martin goes to bed o- earlier than I do, guys. I Idaho only has good losses, as in competitive against two FBS teams and then push the number two team in the nation to the brink. Idaho has a good win right now. We need Montana to start picking up a few more wins, so that stays a very good win. But at the time, Montana was top five, so that's still a good win. Picking up a win against Eastern. Eastern's looking like that's not going to be considered a good win for playoffs. But if Idaho picks up a win against Davis, because Davis gets a run of the four shittiest teams in the conference back to back to back to back, Davis is going to look much stronger on paper than they actually are. But that's good for Idaho. Idaho needs to beat teams with solid resumes. So uh, a win over Davis and winning out is going to give another like pretty good win on Idaho's schedule with no bad losses. Eight wins and a seed is feasible. Not what you'd gamble on necessarily, but... Getting to skip the Thanksgiving week is on the table for Idaho. And at this point, you should expect worst case scenario for Idaho 
the Vandals are going to be playing first week. Or they're going to play in the first playoff round right now because Idaho, you're right, Martin, you said earlier, Idaho is a playoff team. They proved they're a playoff team today. That's all for me. I'm ready to throw it to the Picasso of outros. Martin, are you, uh, are you if you're ready to work your magic, I'm going to just go with the, you know, guys, see you on Tuesday for the Tuesday show. Check out my show, which I will do tomorrow night, uh, covering the entire Big Sky Conference, essentially only talking about the good teams now, like Idaho. And, uh, hey, a lot of people have been jumping into hashtag only tubs, patreon.com backslash tubs of the club. We've had a huge influx, especially since that Montana win. Uh, every every subscriber to our YouTube helps us get closer to that 1,000 where YouTube has to play to pay us. And every patron helps us keep the lights on, helps us uh, you get a little fun money out of the project, and helps us you know pay for the kind of things that keep the show running. So thank you to everyone who's joined. Thank you to every, everyone who shares the episodes and hits subscribe. With that, I'm going to say go Vandals and let Martin run the show. Go Vandals. I-D-A-H-O! I know, I know, go, go, go! This is... Producer Brian doing a terrible job of even finding what we're going to play us out with. So I'm just going, we're just going to call it good. See you guys Tuesday.